Margot had changed races. When I rushed in TGI Fridays and left the summer's oppressive triple-digit heat at my back, I searched for a 20-something woman with melanin-filled skin, had hunted from booth to booth when someone had eased up behind me, touched my shoulder. When I turned around, I saw a pale woman covered in tats and body piercings, a shapely number as goth as Melrose Boulevard. Hey guys, I'm back again and I have for you a review of Bad Men and Wicked Women. This is the new release by Eric Jerome Dickey. The release date is today, April 17th, and this is a review for Dutton Books. Now, I have to admit, this book is totally out of my reading zone because I don't really get into this kind of reading as much. I really do like Eric Jerome Dickey, but as I have said previously, I prefer reading his earlier works. I think they're a lot better. This book discusses a hitman whose name is Ken Swift and he and another guy who is this African sidekick guy, they are hitmen for a big bad person called uh, San Bernardino. So they do work for San Bernardino. Now the story is, you know, it, it's, it's a story that has two storylines going on. You have the storyline of what the hitmen, what the hitmen do. And then the second storyline is Ken Swift's past. So it's Ken Swift meeting up with his daughter that he hasn't seen since she was a child. And then we get this whole storyline with Ken Swift and all of his girlfriends. Okay, this is the uncorrected proof. So it, this one read to over 400 pages, but I think the book will be released with 387 pages, I think it is. Which I say thank God, because it's quite a lot over 400 pages. But to be honest, not a lot happens in the book I would say the first half of the book. And I found that a bit troublesome, a, a bit boring. Not to mention, I think, I mean, Eric Jerome Dickey must be in his late 50s, I guess, or early 60s, I'm not really sure. But I have the impression he's trying to write towards the millennials, the up and coming young blacks, you know, in their 20s. You know, I think he's writing towards them because there are a hell of a lot of uh, references to pop culture. So if you don't know anything about pop culture, don't pick this book up because you're not going to understand any of the references that he makes. So for example, um, like he'll make reference to the way someone looks and he'll give someone who is, you know, up like now in pop culture, like he'll use, like at one point he used Chris Brown and Rihanna. And that was a little disturbing for me that he used that like that. But um, that's the kind of thing that he does in the book in order to give you the image that he wants you to imagine. He doesn't necessarily describe it fully, but he'll make a line or an expression. So using someone from pop, pop culture so that you know <clears throat> what he means. That can be either or disturbing or not as descriptive enough for you. But if you know the people, you know, I didn't have any problems following the pop, pop culture references. But for somebody, like I said, who doesn't, you're not going to like this book. Another thing I don't like about this book is that he spends it. This is like a manly man's book because you get a lot of you, there is some sex in it so if you don't like that then you might have to stay away and there is a lot of violence now the parts that become more violent are from the middle towards the end of the book and it kind of like I just I think it the best way to say it is it reads a lot like it reads a lot like what a what a Tarantino movie looks like or like in Scandal you know how like when they like 
they start taking out their tools and stuff and they're going to go and torture somebody and they got to clean up after her and it's got it's got that flair to it so now you're probably wondering what are the good parts i would say that eric jerome dickey is still very good at trying to put relationships together so like what he does is he'll have a character like this hitman and he will make him hard but at the same time he will show this second side of the character which is a softer more acceptable side of the, the hitman's character and he does that duality really well another thing that's very good in the book is that i would say his dialogue but sometimes his dialogue is it just it makes me laugh and I'm not really sure if it's supposed to make me laugh or that's just me reacting that way but there are some dialogues in here I just I couldn't stop cracking up laughing I thought I thought it was pretty funny and he also makes a lot of reference to things that are going on today racially in America so whether it be you know problems with the police footballers protesting by taking the knee people bleaching their skin literally he takes a stab at everything racially going on in america he even takes takes a few you know stabs at trump and so it's it's kind of amusing to read but at the same time it's kind of annoying because it almost seems um, you know too much over a little bit over the top you know than what it need to be it's one thing if you take a jab or two here and there but like if you are doing it as much as he does it in this book it's like overkill but be that as it may i'm still giving this book a two star i found this okay because like i said more than half of the book i was pretty bored and i was a little disappointed i was really expecting something to turn more around something like what he did with the blackbirds but with men and you know hitmen but it wasn't at all like that it was very different and i felt like like i said he was trying to impress the millennials out there who might be picking up eric jerome dickey 2018. so for me this was not a good one but i'm not giving up on eric jerome dickey's later writing like I said, if you want to read something uh, that he's written lately, I would say go check out The Blackbirds. That's pretty well done. It's a, I gave that one, I think, three, three and a half stars. Go check that one out. It's uh, pretty good. I would say go check this one out if you like that Tarantino kind of stuff, you know, blood, gore, that kind of thing. Go check that out. And yeah, and remember, it's being released today, the 17th. Thanks for watching. That's all I have for you today. If you have picked up Bad Men and Wicked Women, Let's talk about it below. What did you think about it? Did you think it was more than a two star? Would you read it? Let's discuss it.